Hello, I'm Dr. Dan Undersander, Extension Research Forage Agronomist with the University of Wisconsin. And we're going to talk today a little bit about establishing alfalfa and grasses for hay and silage. Uh, the first thing to consider when establishing stands is that we need to have the right soil pH, we need to have uh, a firm soil, and we need to place it at the right depth. Low soil pH, loose soil, and improper seeding depth are responsible for about 90% of the stand failures that we have in alfalfa and grass establishment. We do recommend a soil pH of uh, 6.8. When we get lesser pHs, we will have uh, slower establishment and poorer stands. The other thing is, is seeding depth. A lot of our alfalfa is seeded with a brilliant seeder and then depth is not an issue because we're distributing on a packed soil and then punching it into the soil a little bit. But as we're using more and more drills for seeding, depth and, and seeding too deep becomes a major issue. What this graph shows is that our recommended seeding depth, uh, which is a quarter to half an inch, uh, is fine. Uh, it will give us the best stands. It will give us a little bit of ground cover. It will hold the moisture in place. As we go deeper than a quarter of an inch, particularly on the sands and the clays, uh, what you see is that the uh, establishment declines very rapidly with seeding depth. And so this is one of the uh, examples and kinds of things that we see in the field where you see a row that came up just fine and right next to it on either side is a row that uh, did not come up. That means that one disc opener was putting the seed at the right depth and the disc openers on either side were putting the seed either too deep or too shallow. So seeding depth is a key issue. We need to, with drills, uh, have depth bands, have them properly adjusted. The other thing that we need for getting a good stand is a firm soil. <clears throat> when we put that seed in the ground, we need to pack the soil against it so that that seed can absorb water from the soil. Uh, <clears throat> if the soil is loose, that means there's too much air space. That means that the seed does not contact the soil and the seed will not take up the water. So here's an example of a field where the soil was not packed. And you can see that in this case the grass came up fine where the wheel lugs of the tractors were, where there was a little additional packing of the soil, and we got absolutely no stand in between the only difference being how loose or tight that soil was. So again, the three major causes of stand failure are low soil pH, a loose soil, and improper seeding depth if we're using a drill. If we could overcome those, uh, in most cases, we would get good stands. Nothing works all the time, but we would get good stands most of the time. And I would strongly invest that as you or your clientele are working with fields that you suggest uh, proper seeding equipment, proper adjustment. Uh, too often uh, we use old equipment that isn't properly repaired, isn't properly adjusted, and then we end up with stands like we've seen in the previous pictures. Now, Let's talk a little bit about the germination process. Uh, alfalfa is a kidney-shaped seed. You actually don't see this so much anymore because most of the seed that is sold is coated with a clay or polymer coating. And that polymer coating holds the inoculum. It holds, uh, in some cases, uh, f usually fungicide, one or two, and in some cases, some minerals and, and other products. Uh, such coating is, is actually, in most cases, beneficial to the seed and would be recommended. We need to keep in mind that there are two distinct kinds of coating. The standard clay coating is about 32% of the weight. The uh, polymer coatings can be as low as 8 to 10% of the weight. You can tell what you have by looking at the tag on the bag and the inert material would be largely the seed coating. So in one case you might have 32% inert material in your bag and in the other case you might have 8 or 10% inert material. Look at the seed tag on the bag to determine how much 
pure seed you have and what the germination is. Now as that seed begins to germinate, <clears throat> the first thing that it does is pick up water and uh, if you have good seed soil contact and then that seed swells in size and then that seed coat uh, cracks as you see here on the bottom. Uh, that uh, water uptake is called imbibition. So the 25 cent word for the day is imbibition, water uptake by the seed coat. Now one of the challenges that we can run into uh, is that we can have partial water uptake, we can have the enzyme processes begin, and then if we don't have enough water for full uh, emergence of that radical, then what we have is uh, seeds dying on us. And that's one of the reasons why we recommend a spring or a fall planting unless we have irrigation because we're likely to have a prolonged period of wet weather and be able to maintain soil moisture. So after the seed coat cracks, the radical comes out. <clears throat> then the radical grows down and at some point uh, that radical anchors itself and then it pushes uh, this hook up through the soil surface and drags the cotyledons with it and the seed coat falls off. So that uh, pops up above ground. These are the cotyledons that were in that seed coat and this is the growing point. The first leaf <clears throat> then is a monofoliate leaf. Alfalfa is generally a trifoliate uh, leaf plant but the first true leaf up here is a monofoliate leaf and then here again are the cotyledons and here are the new uh, leaflets uh, beginning to grow. The reason that this is important is that when we talk about herbicide applications they oftentimes recommend a four to five leaf stage and it is important to recognize that the cotyledons and this monofoliate do not count in that. When we talk about four to five leaves we're talking about four to five trifoliate leaves. So after uh, a little bit more growth you see the first trifoliate leaf out. Here again are the cotyledons, the monofoliate that we saw. Whoops. And then another set of leaves coming out. And then here again is a little later stage. And part of the reason I put this here is I usually ask people, okay, what leaf stage is this? And we'll usually get answers that this is around four or five leaves. When we count the leaf stage, remember first, we do not count this leaf because it's not trifoliate. But also, when we talk about a leaf stage, we are counting leaves where the leaflets have fully expanded so that they're not touching each other. So this one would count this one, this one, this one, but not this one since these have not fully developed yet. So this is about a three or four leaf stage alfalfa. Again, that's important to understand just from the standpoint of when you can first apply certain herbicides. Uh, this is a little later then, and here you see those cotyledons that we've seen green. All the energy has been absorbed from them. Uh, they then dry up and essentially fall off on the ground, and here is the stem going up. Now one of the things that happens, <clears throat> and this is an important uh, process to understand, is that those plants begin to grow, the root goes down, the stem comes up, and then at some point that crown pulls back on itself and forms a little ridge here and this is the crown. You can always feel this in a plant uh, by taking your hand and rubbing it from the stem down to the root and at early stages you'll feel a little ridge somewhat like an o-ring and then it'll eventually develop more significantly like this. I oftentimes get asked on fall seeding, is my alfalfa big enough to make it through the winter? And that's not really the appropriate question. The appropriate question is, does the alfalfa have a crown? If you can feel a crown, then that plant has perenniated and it will make it through the winter. If it does not have this crown, then that plant is not a perennial and it will not survive the winter. Uh, usually this crown develops at about that three or four inch height of plant, 
But again, the uh, real test is to look for that crown. Uh, this then is an established plant and really what I'm showing here is you can see the shoots coming off that develop the next series of growth. You can see some existing stems up here that have in this case been cut, uh, that uh, others are growing up, but these are the buds that will provide the next cycle of growth of that alfalfa. So this is a good healthy crown with a lot of stems. Usually what we like to see is that ground level is something around here, so the crown is just below the surface of the soil. If we have the crown above the surface, uh, we're more susceptible to traffic damage and to winter injury. Now the other thing to kind of keep in mind about growth then is that when alfalfa is cut, generally speaking, we are talking about regrowth from those buds on the crown. However, if, if you cut high enough, then uh, alfalfa shoots will develop from those uh, axillary buds. This is where an old leaf was. You can see this stem has been cut off. Here is the cut tip of each stem. And then new shoots are coming out from axillary buds along that stem. So generally we don't see this in alfalfa because frankly we shouldn't be cutting this high. But if for any reason we do, that is what happens. Sometimes we'll well, sometimes we'll see this in the spring uh, if we have uh, some growth and uh, we've seen a few times where the stand might get up to 10 or 12 inches and the tip freezes and then what happens is is that along the leaf uh, axillary buds up to, along the stem up to the point of frost kill uh, we will see new branches come out of that alfalfa. Uh, wrong button. So generally speaking, we want alfalfa varieties with good winter hardiness. We'll have less winter kill, but the other thing that happens is that we'll have less winter injury. Remember with alfalfa that the buds are put down in the fall and then uh, they survive the winter and then those are what come out and green up in the spring. If the stand is lacking in winter hardiness, then many of those buds die and we see very sh few shoots come out in the spring like this. And then the plant has to start over in the spring putting out new buds. So here too, this is a winter injured plant. This is a good healthy plant. I think you can very quickly get an idea of which is going to produce more yield on first cutting and therefore more yield for the year. So we want winter hardiness. We're generally recommending a winter survival score of two or less. And that winter, injure, winter survival score is necessary to reduce the potential for winter kill. We still have some. We did a few years ago. But more importantly, year in, year out, it'll give us less winter injury and more yield in the f growing season following the winter. Now, when we uh, look at winter survival, we did recommend a winter survival score of two. And uh, the way that that is done is to plant the varieties in rows. Each row here is a separate variety. We cut very frequently during the year we seed these plants. And then we cut on September 20th when we tell everybody not to cut. And what we're trying to do is stress these plants by having them space planted, by having them cut frequently <clears throat> and cut at a bad time. Uh, we are putting stress on those plants. And so what I think you can see is some rows like this one came out very healthy with lots of shoots. And some rows like this one had lots of dead plants, very few shoots coming out. So this plant has less winter survival ability than this row or this row or this row. So uh, that is a standard test that is run. I encourage people when they're selecting alfalfa varieties to select an alfalfa variety with a winter survival score of two or less. <coughs> so we want very winter hardy winter hardy or moderately winter hardy alfalfa varieties. Again, a winter survival score of two or less. The other thing is, uh, is to evaluate the stands in the spring. If you see an uneven green up frequently, 
That then means that a lot of the buds are dying over winter, that you've got a few that came up. When you see two or three stems per plant, they made it through the winter. The other 15 or 20 didn't. And so then that plant has to start over, and that will show reduced yield. We additionally want more winter hardy varieties if we're cutting at less than 35-day intervals, which most of us are for dairy quality hay. And also, if we're going to take a late fall cutting, we it generally will give us more yield at this point, but it is putting stress on the plant, and so we would like a little bit more winter hardiness if we're going to take late fall cuttings. The other thing I do want to point out is that with regard to uh, seeding, it really is a good idea to calibrate your seeder. And uh, too many people just throw the bags of seed in the seeder, whether it's a brilliant or a drill, uh, and then uh, take off. Uh, it should be recognized that every lot of seed will seed at a different rate because we have variations in seed size, we have variations in density. So here's an example of a little trial that was done where we took six varieties of alfalfa, we put them through a brilliant seeder all uh, without adjusting the rate, in other words the same setting was left on the seeder and what you see is that these varieties seeded from about 21 pounds per acre down to 15 pounds per acre. So here's an example, well actually down to 14. We did the same thing in a John Deere drill where we uh, left the setting the same, we put those same six varieties through and what you see is that uh, most of the varieties seeded at about 16 pounds per acre but a couple were seeding up around 20 or 21 pounds per acre. So what I generally recommend, uh, we're probably not going to take the time to calibrate our drills, but our recommended seeding rate is about 12 pounds per acre. I would suggest that you look at um, using that 12 pound rate, put a third of a bag in the drill and see if you seed about an acre, or put a whole bag in and see if you seed close to three acres. Uh, by doing a test with one bag you can get a pretty good idea of how that lot of seed is going to seed. And then to recognize that if you buy two different varieties you need to repeat the process for each because the seeding rate is going to be slightly different for the two different varieties of seed. The other thing that I will say is that our recommended seeding rate is uh, 12 pounds per acre. Uh, we usually figure something around six seeds per square foot per pound of seed. So six seeds per square foot times 12 pounds is 72 seeds per square foot. Uh, what you see in this trial here is a study that we did where we seeded at four different rates from nine pounds up to 18. And um, yes, we had a few more come up, up to 90 seedlings per square foot as compared to 40 seedlings per square foot. But no matter how much we seeded, all of the stands thinned down to about 32 plants per square foot by the fall of the seeding year. So when you seed at a higher rate, yes, you will have more plants come up, but you will also have more die out in that seeding year and you will end up with about the same stand and we had about the same population over the life of this study. So a higher seeding rate uh, doesn't really help us in any way. It does increase your cost and uh, the other thing that I would be concerned about since uh, all the seeds in the variety don't have the same disease and insect resistance you could, in this establishment period here, uh, lose plants that had resistance that you might need later on in the life of that stand. So we would recommend a 12 pound per acre seeding rate and uh, many people seed more than that but all that's going to happen is those extra plants will come up and then die out by the end of the seeding year. If you need further information on this or any of the other things that we discussed, you can go to a number of our websites. Uh, you can use our variety trial update for looking at characteristics of varieties of grasses and alfalfa and for availability. Uh, we would consider in all cases that uh, we should select premium varieties for improved disease and insect resistance to provide the highest yield for you on your farm.